temple. The people of Judah lament their fate. Their king, Zedekiah, and many of the society's upper echelons have been sent into exile by the Babylonians who now rule the people. And Jeremiah, the, the prophet who once admonished them for breaking their covenant with God with their selfish acts of greed and cruelty towards their neighbors, now spoon feeds them and their sickened souls with hope. And as Jeremiah plays nursemaid to Judah's pain, God comes to walk among the wounded and with a gentle touch forgives them and places a new law upon each of their hearts. No longer will they need to be taught how to find and follow me, he says. Now they have a built-in GPS. Frederick Buchner once wrote, there are all different kinds of voices calling you to all different kinds of work. And the problem that we have is to find out which is the voice of God rather than the voice of society, say, or the superego, or the voice of self-interest. And by and large, a good rule for us for finding is this. The kind of work that God usually calls you to is the kind of work that A, that you need most to do, and B, that the world most needs to be done. The place that God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. The place that God calls you is to the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Just days before he died, Jesus said, listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never anything more than a single grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and it reproduces itself many times over and in the same way. Anyone who holds on too tightly destroys their life. But if you let go, Reckless in your love, it overflows in abundance, real and eternal. Now, I know that there isn't a soul in this place that is completely free enough to let it all go. Each one of us is struggling to let go of something, to trust that the pain for us or for a loved one will stop, that the money will come, that joy will return, that God is ministering to us even now. And sometimes when I'm standing in the rubble of dreams that I tried to build, I can see how 2,000 and 2,500 years ago, God did a new thing. But my heart longs to hear a more recent story. And as our church stands on the cusp of a big decision, along with these ancient texts, a modern story might be just what we need. In his book called The Truth About Stories, Thomas King argues that stories like the ones from tradition and stories like the stories our ancestors tell us have the power. These stories have the power to inform us and transform us. And at the end of each one of the stories that Thomas King shares, he says, take this story. Take this story. It's yours. Do with it what you will. Tell it to your friends. Turn it into a television movie. Forget it. But don't say in years to come that you would have lived your life differently if only you had heard this story. You've heard it now.
One cold and snowy morning in March of 1914, a weary group of Christians stood amongst the torn up canvas and slats of wood that only six hours ago had been their church. Only 12 hours before, they had been singing and praying and praising God when a windstorm had swept through the village. And like the little pigs in a fairy tale, they tried to deny the wind access, but she huffed and she puffed and she insisted upon entry. And just before midnight, they found a brick home nearby to move the piano into. And at 1 a.m., their beloved church was tattered rubble. And it was morning now, and Reverend Agar and his congregants hadn't slept at all. And someone was trudging up the hill towards them through the snow, and in his hands were wet hymnals with matted pages. I found them, he said, at the Swansea schoolyard. 104 years ago, almost to this day, they stood right here in the cold aftermath of the storm, surveying the scattered mess that was once their dream. No one dared to speak, but everyone was praying, oh Lord, what do we do now? The morning breeze, more merciful than the evening storm, picked up a message from God's future and wrote it tenderly upon their heart. And it said, where you see the scattered ruins of a church, I see tossed seeds. Upon this ground you stand bone weary, but I tell you, there will come a day when 300 Sunday school children will play on this lawn all at once. There will come a day when homeless will come out of the cold and find shelter here. There will come a day when a family of three will take refuge in this place of sanctuary. There will come a day when a congregation not much bigger than you are now will gather and ask as you do, what would you have us do, God? So I say to you now, go, go and write down your story for they will hear it and know that I am with them just as I am with you. Here is Windermere's story. Take it. It's yours. Do with it what you will. Tell it to your friends. Turn it into a television movie. Forget it. But don't say you would have lived your life differently. If only you'd heard this story. You've heard it now.